Give me a look. finds its place on the stationery of the planning board, believe it or not. It's a big picture of Overlook right at the top of every letter that the planning board writes. In the 19th century, for some reason, I think people began to feel that they were declaring their own divinity by destroying as much of what God created and what nature created. And I think that that 19th century concept of divinity ought to evolve into something a little bit more respectful of our spot in nature. It's mountains like Overlook which make, make us realize how wonderfully insignificant we are. And when we try to transform and subdue and conquer Overlook or any other gorgeous natural resource like that into something that man man be spoils, it ruins our own sense of ourself. It gives us a false sense of our own deification. It's idolatry in a sense. A culture which destroys its own sacred places or a culture which has no sacred places of its own is not really a culture at all. A civilization which befouls and bespoils its sacred places does not deserve to be called a civilization. So let's start today and do what we can to make an effort to make Overlook a sacred place, a place for all of us and our children to enjoy forever. Mind all of you hiking up. We'll follow the example of the Sierra Club and please try to carry as much of your litter right out with you. So if you bring it in, cart it out with you. All of it. All of your litter. That sounds good. If you were strong enough to carry it up, you're certainly strong enough to bring it back down. Now, right before we're going to have the puppet show. Then we're going to follow with our two poets that are going to lead us up the mountain. And I just want to allude to something that Alf Evers mentioned. He mentioned that this mountain had been stripped by the tanning industry. It had been scarred by the bluestone industry. We weren't here then. We're here now. This is the time. No further exploitation now, because we're part of history. Alf made a beautiful point. He said this celebrate the mountain hadn't happened before. So you're part of the history of Overlook Mountain. Now, we're also going to make history because we're going to be part of a large group photo. What's going to happen is there's a camera right there. Dean Palin has the camera. Everyone that wants to be in the picture will move over in range of the camera. Right after we all smile and have our picture taken, we're going to be entertained by Bob Lavaggi's beautiful puppet show. So please, you want to be part of history, move into the photo here. Smile, Max. Don't Stuart Dean, I'm sorry. Mr. Stuart Dean. Oh. All right, wait. All right, folks. He has, he is not quite ready, our photographer. He wants you to enjoy the brief puppet show, then our photo, then the poets, and we march. So keep your smiles during the puppet show. Now, Bob Lavaggi, all these interesting characters. I'm cool. So cool.
amongst ourselves. Yes, Ed. Remember the day I prepared the application to the FAA for a permit to build the lights? Yes, I do, Ed. Remember how fastidious I was on all the applications? You are a fastidious man, Ed. Remember the first time I questioned you to verify 
The height of the fire tower? Yes, and you didn't leave me alone until I guaranteed to you and crossed my heart it was 100 feet tall. <laughs> yes, Ed. Remember we filed four separate applications before we measured the fire tower? Yes, Ed. The first one was unacceptable, un unacceptable because it needed lights. The second was shorter and did not need lights. The third was taller and needed lights. And the fourth was shorter and did not need lights. Yes, Ed. <laughs> then we found out that we were lying on the first four applications. We sent the fifth one explaining our mistake. Well, we saw no reason to burden the Woodstock Planning Board with the fact that we had a pending application with the FAA. The board seemed eager to issue a permit for the tower, and we had already the tower we had already built, and discussing the details of the pending permit would have been upsetting to them. You know, Ed, we were quite considerate of their feelings. That's right, Ed. You tricked us. Oh, come on, Longwig. Did you expect us to tell you we were tricking you? Each time your proposed tower exceeded the height of the fire tower, lights were required. In the tower application that you kept secret from us, your tower exceeded the fire tower, yet you assured us that lights would not be necessary. We only said what you wanted to hear. We all knew that the only reason you wrote no lights into the permit was to satisfy the bleeding heart environmentalists. We had the best interest of our town in mind when we wrote no lights into the permit. Mr. Bonito, surely you can recall the day you and I stood around prior to the meeting joking about the bleeding heart environmentalists. Bonito, you were partial to having the tower on our mountain from the very start. I was only doing my job. At the public hearing, you ignored us completely. You had your chance to speak. At the public hearings, we listened to you. We up here on the planning board have opinions also. Why have public hearings at all if all you consider are your own opinions? Just one second. We up here are experts in our field. For example, <laughs> I am an engineer. Mr. Burner is an engineer. Mr. Longwig is an engineer. And Miss Yana is an architect. Mr. Artwood is an engineer. And our supervisor, Lovell, is a camera technician. We are all 20th century professionals. And we naturally have a keen appreciation for high-tech development in our community. We believe that we were serving the town's people and the entire Hudson Valley by making our majestic mountain the source for good family entertainment. We could not be influenced by petty preoccupations of environmentalists who know nothing about broadcasting. Yeah, that's right. Uh, John, it's true that uh, we are experts, aren't we? But uh, let's not rub it in their face uh, that they don't, they don't know as much as us. I'm not rubbing anything in anyone's face. Gentlemen, ugh, ugh. Gentlemen, ugh. Uh, Let's not argue. We all know the economic ugh, pressure of the broadcast industry, and it was incumbent upon <laughs> us to be efficient. Benito. <laughs> uh, Benito! <laughs> Vicky, you are not saying... Yeah, Vicky, you are not saying that we rushed, are you? Uh, uh, no, my gosh, but the tower was already erected. Uh, and, and we had not even issued the permit. Our ineptness was getting uh, embarrassing. Hey, uh, nobody was embarrassed. Uh, uh, our solution to the situation was uh, clever. Uh, we added uh, restrictions onto the special use permit, you know. Uh, must not be taller, must not be noisy or have lights. We got TZA to agree to everything. We covered our asses. Ho, ho, ho. 
We issued the permit for the already completed tower. Satisfied the bleeding heart environmentalist. At least they should have been satisfied. Ugh. Well, it was a clever move we made there, you know, but quite frankly, I always wonder how WTCA got the FAA to allow the 299 foot tower without life. I wondered if there might have been some hanky panky there. Yeah. Yeah.
middle. I know. Yes. 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 Okay, again. Before we end this, we have to do some interviews with whoever we missed before. Okay. What you gonna do, guys? We're gonna get puppets. Okay, but they'll need to be at the back, otherwise they'll be blocking people. We gotta wait for the puppets. We're waiting well, for the puppets. I'll take a quick so. one. Okay, everybody, it's Limburger this time. Okay? One, two, three. Say cheese. Limburger. Okay, this one's for Leader Kranz. <laughs> and on the federal level, and has to build like a political thriller. It has to build in intensity and strength and emotion and passion and art so that when these special use permit hearings occur at the end of the year, it's going to build up. This, this permit for this high-tech spike is up for grabs in the fall. And if we have the political will and the emotional and moral will, we can take that sucker down. And you have to write the DEC, you have to urge that the top of the mountain be purchased under the Environmental Bond Quality Bond Act. There's plenty of money to buy not only the air rights, but the land on top of the mountain and add it to the wilderness preserve all along this area. This is a state designated wilderness. Only the spike <laughs> is not in the wilderness. So we have to put these, these puppets, they have the relentless pressure on them between now and then. And I think Mr. Zvire will make a, a lot of blunders coming up, and uh, we're going to be able to set up the uh, campaign really, real world, real time, to get it down. So I'd like to introduce a friend of mine, uh, Janine Vega, a terrific poet who's going to sing some, uh, uh, recite some poems about the mountain. And then we'll walk. May I just say something in introducing Janine Vega? Who better to start us up the mountain besides a poet, but someone who has climbed all the peaks in the Catskill Mountains? When we were having those meetings for, um, where they were saying we had public input, you remember R.J. Kelly said, he was actually brought up one of the new points, which was that you can see that sucker from every single mountain in the Catskills. Everyone that, I mean, and anyone you climb that is in the wilderness area still sees it day and night. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you two poems. They're written in two separate mountains. And then I'll end it with uh, Beltana. That's what we are today. It's May 1st, the day when you have to make love all over the earth to ensure a rich harvest. In the mic. Can you hear me now? Okay, this one's called Grandmother, and this was written on Graham Mountain. You know that's over on the western side, northwestern. The mountain won me. She took me over her back and won me. Laying down on the path at dusk, I looked up into her trees, swirling stark antennas, muscular beaches holding their leaves. November light on the orange fur of ferns, blasted already by frost and wind. The oval vaginas in boulders carved by ice, wind, and water. Birthday cake tears nearing the top, the mountain won me. Stretched me out and whistled along old electric lines, sent one bird as messenger from tear to tear. As I came down, a small white bird Surprised at footsteps chomping down the distance in cold November. Wan light, white bird. Face upraised into snow flurries. Distant valleys mottled with sunlight. Mauve and russet coat of fallen leaves. 
bleached ivory grasses and fat corkscrewed torsos of birches fighting for their edge. She won me heart, hoof and eye, leaping down the stream bed. She let me lay there under the swirling branches, under the snow, invited me to lay down in the middle of the road just as I wanted. She carried me on her back like some marsupials till I was old enough to watch which way the stars fell and open the holes they left in the inner eye. Okay, this is when the mountain is difficult. Mountain's not always easy. You don't want it to be always easy. So this is called trek. This is a winter trek. And it's, you, when you go out by yourself, you gotta be cautious. So it's called trek. Moose woman, antler man, track of a porcupine over the snow, dense foliage of droppings in the white arena, winter sun, Bigger than summer sun, clearer, cold, translucent. Antler man, moose woman, snowshoes made of branches tracking up the ravine. She almost beat me, that grim visage of ancient woman, not so kind to someone outside the cave, not so kind the green woman, so exacting. She almost beat me down. My heart gave out. It rattled, don't go on. I listened, blood evacuating the legs and brainstem. Why go on, in fact? What great merciful face is your companion? Merciful face, my own blamelessness. No guilt, no blame, no judge, no jury of one's peers. Look around you. What color is the sky? There is no one guilty here. Not guilty. <laughs> the knowledge that I would surely die became a possibility of error. I could run down. I could leave, I could hike out. Strategically placed, the summit was too close to turn back. Moose woman, antler man, hand gestures signal the hierophants without fanfare. The rioters leave quietly. The city is mostly empty and the initiates few. And to come back, balance off the edge, ask of a stone, ask for more rice soup, more mashed potatoes, more Elmer's glue snow because you're out there in the soup because you choose to. Okay, this is the last one. This is the one they gotta like, go up to. It's called Beltana, and I usually perform it with a musician, Betty McDonald. And it's about this day, May 1st, or a April 30th, Igualito. Hay fires roll down Dragon Hill, the strolling planets in single file, stars above us, stars below us, three times around the pillar of stone, three times around the well, we follow the sun. Thrust of peas, garlic, onion grass, old iron in the fields bereft, stone ardor of buried cold in the spheres of crocus, iris, daffodil, the arching foot of Jonquil at attention. Battered coat of ravenous deer cropping bright green mosses. The white-tailed rabbit leaps four feet in the air. Trillium opens at the mouth of a cave by the fiddle bow. Wild onion. Mating woodpeckers hammer on live trees. Loud, insistent. Crones wait for warm hands, watching as the plow goes in. You are old, old. The king and the queen meet once again. You're on your way. You're on your way up the mountain. There will be water along the way. You're on your way slowly, purposefully. Don't all rush. If you see a small child, ask the parents if they could use a hand, use a shoulder, help each other up the mountain. If anyone finds because of the weather they have to turn back today, Calvin Grimm has graciously said that he would lead a trek for you up the mountain tomorrow. Call our contact number. Enjoy your beautiful afternoon with us. 
Actually, let me get on the rock here. Brian, do you have a minute? you have a minute? Sure. Just want to talk about this. We missed some of the opening yeah. remarks, so we'd just like to reiterate. Okay. Go back to like 10 words. All right. Okay. First with David. Okay. A hundred words or less. Yeah. What no lights is, is what the long-term agenda and the tactic. But we realized that. Um, start from oh. the beginning. Yeah. No lights was uh, started at the instigation of Alan Sussman, and after uh, a short period, we formed a uh, nonprofit group with a board of directors, and I'm on that board. We meet uh, almost uh, once a week, every Tuesday. It's a dinner meal. We have a good time. We cook for each other. And uh, we plan as many strategies as we can to try to save Overlook Mountain. Originally, we were just concerned about taking the lights off the uh, tower, but we realized that the issue was much larger, which is the whole development of the mountain. And we're trying to address it on every front that we can, uh, which includes uh, legal uh, maneuvers, as well as events like this to honor the mountain and show people really how important it is. My personal point of view is that if Woodstock had a lake and there was a, uh, we had granted a permit to someone and they were polluting the lake, people would be very upset about that, but they can't see it in the same context of a mountain. So we're going to climb the mountain, we're going to show people what we've lost, we're going to show the beautiful view and how it's been destroyed by the tower. Thanks, guys. Right. Just Stay with me right Mike. here, okay? See you later, Ike. So, can we have a condensed version of your earlier comments? My earlier comments were short anyway, and to the point. I don't even remember what I said, but I said something about uh, there are some mistakes that can't be rectified. There are some ideas that can't be corrected once they've, once they've been destroyed. And uh, the mountain is precious. The mountain is something that belongs to everybody, not to any special interests. And so basically, I think what I said before was that uh, I'd like for my daughter to be able to take her children up the mountain and to be able to look at it and say, this is the way it's always been, and this is the way it should be. Right? Okay, so if, can you tell us, like, um, your source material for this and your motivation? And, uh, Talking about. Um, uh, I was at the uh, planning board hearings, or many planning board hearings, and uh, listened to the different uh, people on the planning board, and uh, all of their uh, attitudes and expressions kind of soaked in. And all of a sudden, when uh, we decided to do a puppet show, all of that, uh, all of those memories came back to me, and uh, so it was easy to write down my feelings about them. It just came right out. And how did you work with the actors? Um, the and characters? Well, I gave each actor a little bit of a description of the way I wanted them to act. But in fact, I invited them all to uh, do whatever they wanted with the part. And uh, for instance, in the case of uh, Mark Black, uh, completely took off on his own uh, his own trip, and he didn't represent the character at all, but uh, it worked for the puppet show, and uh, ultimately the bottom line is how the sh puppet show worked as a puppet show. Worked great. Yeah. Worked <laughs> In classic sense, that style. Yeah. Great puppets. Yeah. So, any final words about your hopes for this this activity today? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, hoping that the activity draws more attention to the mountain and to the uh, development of the mountain and encourages the population of Woodstock and population in general to uh, have an opinion, develop an opinion uh, to resist the development of the mountain so that it always remains natural and available to uh, play on and enjoy the uh, beauty of. Let me ask one more question. You're a builder, right? Yes. So do you, do you not sometimes have to go before this planning board and deal with them and get permission from them? And does this uh, 
Uh, as a matter of fact, I am. I have something coming up before them. <laughs> uh, I have something coming up before the planning board in a few weeks or next month, and uh, on some part of me uh, felt there might be a conflict of interest here, poking fun at the planning board that I was going to have to sit in front of. Uh, but, I mean, I developed an awareness about each of these individuals as individuals while I was building the puppets. And uh, Woodstock is basically a family. Uh, and I sort of imagined poking fun at Uncle uh, John. Uh, and hopefully the, uh, hopefully the planning board and, the, and Woodstock are, have the same purpose. And I think we all have to assume that we all have the same purpose. And the planning board is functioning to protect the environment. That's the bottom line. And so I think we can all see through the fun and jokes and know that we're all working together to keep with that. That's my first impression. Now. You mean today? Right now. There should be more people here. We could shake it down. What we really need is some uh, wire cutters. Dynamite would do nicely. <laughs> See, I want to show that like film, the Sam Lovejoy film and Inspire. Let's get it. Okay. We'll have a benefit, OK? OK, let's. Okay. Materials for the arts. <coughs> three wires. Three wires. Let's see. A pair of gloves and a five dollar pair of pliers. Show me. These I think it's just the top three. According to Bill, <coughs> you can get up here and just snip. Cut them with a five dollar pair of pliers. He says so. Is there anybody bring a hacksaw? He says you can do it with a pair of pliers. A pair of pliers? That's Bill says. Pull these little bolts out here? No, I think he's talking about up there. No. It could be done. You know, oh, we need an engineer. Well, he, uh, Engineering Bill, study. Bill, uh, <laughs> Bill Vinsky ran through that computer, you know, and that was that's the weak point right there. These three, these three wires. And then the rest, and then step back because it would snap. Oh, it wouldn't. It. I think a charge. You know. Step back, you know, and blow it up. <laughs> That's how they do it in uh, what? Yeah, we're gonna go up in the war. Yeah, but I think you would. I think you'd do more damage to the environment that way if you blew it up. No, oh, it would fall. It would fall. It's gotta fall. Son of a bitch, it's gotta fall. Look at this. Evil. <laughs> so ugly. And when you go up on the fire tower to get your view. You're exactly in line with these microwaves coursing through your skull. <laughs> wow, we're all a little overheated now. Huh? Huh? We're all a little overheated now. Big cloud all dots. You get the picture, you go round and round. No. Oh, that's make money off of, off of renting the tower? Renting space on the tower? Whose property is this up here? It's, isn't it public domain? What? Up this here? property? This is private property. This is C. Powers Taylor. Uh, well, Albert Grossman's estate owns this, right? Yes. Yeah, just the building. Albert owns this. He bought it from Peter Mayer. Yeah, this. Is that right? 
Yeah, it's like 40 grand for like three quarters, oh, this, these two buildings. And this is rented for 25 years from the owner of this 24 or 25 acres. C. Powers Taylor owns it and he leased it out for, I think it's 25 years to WTCA and this is it. So what's come in is the actual trail? Well, state land is state almost land. completely this is, yeah, surrounding this. This, this yeah. is like a little hernia this, of this private is, property yeah. that juts but, into state land. Well, not, yeah, it's a little 24 yeah. acres. Oh, but yeah. isn't it still officially in the Casco Mountain Preserve? Yes, well, so is Woodstock. Right, but yeah. why wouldn't they have had to get a permit to put a, from the Casco Mountain Preserve to put a tower on the peak? They did, and that's why the judge said that it it was erroneously granted in the first place. There's any any structure within 500 feet of the edge of the Catskill Preserve has to go to the county. And that's exactly what didn't happen in this case. I don't think that this is on the Catskill Preserve. I think the Catskill Preserve starts about 250 feet in that direction. Huh. And that because it's so near it, you had to get permission which wasn't attained. Well, when you're coming up to 12, the, you read a sign saying entering the Catskill Preserve, but it did that It's around. a zigzag thing. I don't know exactly uh, where its boundaries are. Yeah, I think it's, it's I also think there's a difference it, between the... It's private there's property. There's a Catskill Preserve, and then there's a Catskill something else, and then there's, there's like different areas of, of, of jurisdiction, and in each classification, different things are permitted. But one thing is certain is all this far side over here is wilderness, a state-designated yeah, wilderness, yeah. and that's the deal here is to get this also attached to the state wilderness area. of most of the mountains. The state is, you know, the state wants to buy the gill plant, which is over on this side. There's like what, 100, 200 acres of of uh, Woodstock gill land. And then they, we want to get them to acquire this land under the Eminent Domain Act with the money from the Environmental Quality Bond Act. They have $250 million to spend on this kind of thing. And this is a perfect place to do it. Yeah. That's a new addition, that shed out there? Yeah. What's uh, that? Where? There's sort of a, of a patio on, on the power building over there that yeah, I don't remember. <coughs> about? Right. The film was about this environmentalist named Sam Lovejoy's, it's, what's it called, Sam Lovejoy's? War. 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 Sam Lovejoy's it War? It was a, it was a, well, you know what it was. It was Sam about Lovejoy's a power, War. it was about a power line, right? No, no, it was, uh, it was a, a weather tower to check with an an anemometer at the top, checking wind patterns for a potential nuclear power plant they were going to build. Lovejoy goes in, offs the tower on the grounds that it's the precursor of this nuclear power plant. And then they made a movie, a mo good movie. Sam Lovejoy's War, right, yeah. Which, which, and then they never built the power plant. He won. We can win. <laughs> you know, and you're actually, which is what you can, you know, to get the, the vision around the, the whole 350-degree, uh, 60-degree picture, you are in direct line with the uh, waves. They're going through your cranium. If you stand there long enough, you, like Sonny, will have a horrible headache. <laughs> Something else. The Rangers had a headache since he's been working up here? Yeah, he came up the other day. Spent four and a half hours here. Went down with another horrible headache. So he said, they say it's all in my mind. I said, you should have told him it's all in your cranium. <laughs> because the, play, the part of the body that the microwaves affects is the cranium. And I think it's where Russia's uh, uh, maximum dosage is three times lower than ours, and Canada's is three. I mean, what we consider was well within the bounds of uh, of healthy, uh, acceptable microwave uh, uh, radiation uh, exposure is completely off the fucking map in court in terms of you know like what the rest is really of the civilized world, right? <laughs> what one calls a civilized world. Yeah. Uh. Yep. And goes up and it's closed in the winter time. Yeah. You come out there. Oh, wow. This part of Torch Hunter. Yeah, like at the top of. Right, yeah. He was not particularly skilled. Taking picture of the um, tower? Yeah, what do you think? I, I think like we should it. knock it down. Yeah. Have any ideas how to it do it? It looks so ugly up yeah. there. I think oh, we should knock it down. Move it. Let's just I take want a big truck yeah. and let's 
Cut the string or whatever it's holding. Yeah, yeah, cut the cables. I think we should not get done because I want the mountain. I like climbing it. Yeah, then you I like get to the see, wildlife. Because then you get to see the whole so nice. view and you get yeah. to see animals. Yeah. yeah. The tower looks ugly. It ruins yeah. the whole view. Right. It's a great wildlife place and oh, the, the tower is just a stupid place. I mean, beach. it's blocking our view. We don't want. We we like the mountain. We don't want it yeah, to. The tower is dumb. The tower is dumb. <laughs> there. Thanks. Hi. 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 <laughs> the tower is bad. The fall, fall of summer, fall of '85. And you came, first time you were here while it was on, was it must have been the spring of? 86. I would think, you know, they started it in 85, I guess, in the fall. But I didn't notice any problems because I was here off and on. And then last year I didn't notice it all, or 86 I didn't notice a lot much. But last year, most every day I was here during the day full time, you could notice it was quite strong, you know. Mm -hmm get headaches almost every day that I was here. And a lot of times I would come up for a couple of hours and then leave, you know, just because I knew what was going to happen. 87, so you come up in the morning and you don't yeah. have a headache. That's right, and when and you how go how long home, does it take the headaches to come? Oh, you know, about three or four hours before you So by you around really, noon or so? You would notice it considerably. And what about uh, taking painkillers like Tylenol or does I, it work? Or? I tried that and it didn't, didn't numb it at all. It, it just, the headache stayed right there, it just pounded. You, you know, almost to the point where you didn't want to turn your head on a pillow with fear it was going to blow apart. It's, it's terrible. And then when you leave the mountain, how long does it take to go away? Uh, probably five or six hours at least. So it ruins a lot of your nights and you go home and can't watch the news? Or? That's right. It was one of those things where you, you know, you didn't really look forward to coming back the next day. And are there any uh, other symptoms besides bad headaches and uh, nausea? Or? Not really that I have noticed, no. Not, have no. you talked to uh, anybody at the television station, asked them what they I recommend? Had, I had talked to them a couple of times, you know, just, the and they said there should be no harmful effects. And then mm -hmm. I had some fellows from the Department of Environmental come up here, and they brought the machines up and tested it. And the test they did, they said they couldn't find anything. It was over and above the power that, you know. But whether the so station had dropped their power at the time the test was being done, this I don't know whether they were informed. So they, they went up to this tower and took radiation levels and it was beneath the F uh, yes. guidelines of right. uh, milliwatts per cubic Apparently, per square inch right. or whatever. That's they have the, standards, so they claim it's below the federal standards. That's right. right. It's hard to believe with the, what do they got? Two million watts going on? Yeah. I really you know how many watts they, no. they have? They're allowed to use five million watts, but I don't no. think they use all five no. million. I'm not aware of what yeah. they, they put out this way. I was talking to a man there this morning, you know, and he said that they have a million going this way. Mm -hmm. you know, so I know it's a little a million right. or a little more. Right. And when did they do, when did the DEC do the ra uh, radiation check? It must have been July or August last year. Of 87? Right. And so, today, you got a headache today? <coughs> Not right this minute. I got a little bit of a, yeah, I can feel it in the sides of my head. But I, and how do you, you feel? Know. Does it feel like uh, something hitting your head? It, or it really gets to, to pounding, yes. It's, mm -hmm. It gets to be a, such an ache that... You Even know. in your cabin here? Or oh, maybe? yes. Do you have to spend time up in the watchtower there? I'm up in there quite a bit of the time, but right now with the roof off it and everything, it's, I see. it's yeah, there's windows that broken. It has a damaged roof, so yes. you can Boy. When the wind lets up a little bit, I'll put the other section in, but it's... But when you're up in there, you notice it, you know, if you're so up there It just there, gets mostly. worse and worse and worse, and the uh, Headache remedies won't do anything for it, and then it doesn't go away for six hours. Right, it's at least six hours, sometimes longer, and then you really don't look forward to coming back for more. Mm -hmm. yeah, so what are you going to do? I don't know. I thought of giving it up, you know, but then someone else will have the same problem. Uh, I just have to 
get a couple of different people up here to have the headache right along with me, and then, you know, maybe something could be done about it. Have you uh, talked to, do you know, Maurice or Maurice no. Henshi, or? I know who he is. I, I think, know, uh. Worked with his son for a while here. On a, that's right, his son's in the, yeah. works for the DEC. I think he would be very sympathetic, uh, certainly. It might take somebody a year of being here every day to get, start getting him. Well, no, I think, I think you have, you're a, a long-term, you know, uh, uh, a reputable member of the community. Everybody knows you, and you certainly yeah, have. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, no uh, you didn't the, raise a ruckus about the tower when it was no, put up, and, and you're no. just a person with a. I didn't appreciate it. Some clear the the road out as wide as they did, and cut some of the trees. I asked them not to cut. You know, there was, mm -hmm. I had some favorite trees down yeah. there. They had gone to trouble to cut where well, they could have gone to the opposite side of the road to put their power line up. But mm -hmm. no, they. But you didn't rock the boat, and no, now, and now uh, you know the boat's rocking you. <laughs> it's going to cause me to, to get out of it. I can see that. How many uh, years uh, do you have in? This is my 27th. I'm on so, now. It's so what do you? Can you draw retirement? For, can you go in for a partial? Uh, I could put in for retirement. I can't draw it right yet. I see. Then I'll have to wait until I'm 55. See. But I see. But well, that's terrible. At the uh, time. I, and your eyes? Have you had your eyes checked? Or? No, I haven't. It's something I thought about. Different ones have mentioned to me that I should. Cataracts. Uh, you yeah. look for cataracts. Well, it's possible. It, you know, it could start. But I haven't noticed really anything I can see mm -hmm. off in the distance. I know I've started to wear glasses occasionally to read if I have to read any length like of time. But that may be coming with age too. Yeah, they might just come not. Yeah. Well, that's it's. Uh, I'd heard about it. <coughs> Bomber told me about it about a year mm -hmm. ago that you were having headaches. Definitely, it's you know. So they're like excruciating. Oh, unbearable. Sometimes you you know you want to leave here because of the, the headaches, but it's so bad you you hate to even get in the vehicle and drive. That's that's how bad the headaches get because you, you have trouble controlling it. Yeah. It's there's no way you can, can get around it. Mm -hmm. It's. Something, you know, I thought maybe it would go away. Maybe they would drop their power. Maybe they would, something would happen about it. But I was talking with different ones that they said that their permit comes up for renewal in, in the fall. Yes, it does. But if it was harmful and hazardous to the health. Then What's the chain of command? You, you report to uh, people in, uh, New, in Paltz. New Paltz. Right. So is Keller right. uh, per, your, uh, over you somehow? He is, yes. They had a Region 3? Ray Wood and uh, Ray Wood is the, right. He's he's my district ranger. I see. And so they're the ones that brought in the. Uh, uh, I asked them to have the the test done. Yes, and they sent Bob Schwenk and one of the men from the Adirondacks. They brought a machine up and, and performed the test up here. I see. And both of those are reliable guys. Is you know. Mm -hmm. Could be. Well, maybe. Uh, I don't know. I watched the, the scale go up and down on there. They had a little antenna they stuck out the window. When they brought it down behind the metal part of the tower, the scale went down on their screen. They had a little, like a TV screen up there, and it dropped way down. As soon as they brought it up in the open window, it went The open to the window top, up in the, uh, in in the, the tower. ranger tower? Yes. And, you know, that... And that's what you got to look out of. you got to be up looking around. That's right. So you're getting zapped through the open window. Right. So did behind. they take an average between the open window and inside? They might have taken some sort of average. They, they were writing numbers down, and they had to go back home and do their bookwork on it, so I don't really know. So they took I, a number of readings and then may or right. may not have averaged right. out. Uh, I'm not one to calculate something and like that. And they didn't so. give you a copy of their reading no. or their mathematics no. or their averaging. They just said that. I wouldn't have had to compute it anyway. Yeah. I'm not one to, I see. to calculate something like that. That's so I wonder where the paper, paperwork must be at the outer. It's Region 4. What's... No, the well, Region 3 is... I know, it's Region 3, but the guys were brought in from... Uh, I believe one from 3 and one from 5, I think he was One from, from 5. I believe he was from Region So three. the paperwork may be up in the office at 5. It's, it's possible. I see. It's, well, it's a terrible thing. What's it like up here? Uh, I mean, what's it like on a, day, a favorite kind of a day, ordinarily, without the tower? I mean, what's, what's it like on the mountain? A nice, clear, crisp day is beautiful. You can, look forever out there, you know, there's no interference, it was really, really pretty out there, and, you know, you sit here, and you, that's all you, you're here to look out the window and, and look for smoke, so you, yeah. when you're out there, you got the beauty of the, the visibility and, you know, that, but then when you, you try and duck the radiation waves up there, you, 
you sit there and you think, do I really want to go up there? But so you're afraid to go up to what was once a very beautiful experience, really? you know, seeing the beauty of the Hudson Valley, and that's, now it's ruined for you. I used to sit When's up there. When's the last headache you had? The, was it? One day last week, I was up here working on a telephone and cleaning the tower out from the broken windows and that, and I had a headache. That was the, f the first day that I had spent that much time up here this year, and it affected right away. You told us about a telephone signal. What, what is that uh, all about? I don't know where I picked it up from. I know I had the telephone down there near the station. I was testing the lines to see when I had corrected the fault that had the line was out of order so I was down there repairing the wires and that and just listening before I clamped the, the line on the, the phone on the line I got a loud hum on there down near their station so it was picking up transmission from without any wires being with, connected. You're just wire. holding a phone. Right. No wires, no, no connection to any pole. You're just okay. holding a bare just, naked phone and you're getting just, a dial tone. <laughs> I, I couldn't. Well, why didn't you could make a few calls, maybe? <laughs> I don't know if it was a dial tone, but it was, it was a loud a dial, It was yeah. a TV buzz, or you could right. might be able to pick up Mr. Ed or something. Well, God, it's that's, possible. That's unbelievable. Because so that, That's the same hum uh, type of energy that's going into your, I know uh, vibrating on, your head, causing your On headache. the set wave that the, the state has, on the frequency that they have for their two-way radio up here, you could hear Mr. Ed, you could hear I Love Lucy, you could hear several different shows on the radio. You couldn't squelch it out. And, you know, 90% of the time when they were on, you couldn't hear the transmissions the other fellows were calling you. You know, if one That's of the men on our radio was calling, their set was overriding. You couldn't even back the squelch off. You had to turn the volume down to almost off and in order to counteract it so it wasn't annoying. Mm. So you well, don't know how to win. But do you uh, do you have a headache now or anything? Not that much of one. I got a slight headache, but it's. I'm sure if I stay here the rest of the day, it'll it'll get worse. That's something I really hope it doesn't, but I'm sure by late afternoon it will. Mm. It's. We send the Excedrin people up here. No, he said that the headache remedies don't take care of it. Nothing takes care of it. No, that's, that's like a torture. To come to it's so, so ironic to come to a beautiful spot that's so thrilling to the eye, and then to, to dread it because it causes you great pain. Well, right, it should cause you great pleasure and peace. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's like the most beautiful place in the world, and yet you're tortured for coming to it. You don't look to the. So, point where you really want to come to a yeah. spot where you, you yeah. get it like that. That's well, something uh, uh, Hinchy, you know, Maurice or somebody. That's right. That's anyway, I'm I sorry. Don't know. I'd heard about it. I was always too shy to ask you about it, but I, I had to heard about it for a year. For a year. Well, I've talked to different people about it, and some say, oh, well, I'm sure you are, and some say, no, if they've tested it and it's not. But you're a regular to... guy around town. You're not like a wild uh, guy. No, you know, you're no. just a guy around town that's doing their job. I don't smoke and I don't drink. That's what, well, know, no, I mean, you have so a reputation being a straight it's... shooter and just a straight guy. And, I can and, see and if, if they don't believe you, who, who in the hell are they going to believe? Who knows? It's, you know, you can't. I'll bring, I, I, know, I know some people to tell. All right, that's. Anyway, anyway, thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. That's I think, why don't you get a, like, a, ask around about maybe wearing a helmet with that's lined with foil or something. I mean, if, if, if. Right, but yeah. what's that do to the rest of your body? Yeah, yeah you, you better know? get out of here. You're this, still a young guy. What, are you in your 40s still? Yeah, I'll be 48 this year. You bet, you know, you, you, you got another 30, 40, 50 years to live, well, so you better. I kind of look forward to a few anyway, but. Yeah, but I mean, so maybe you should. Uh, this. You Liver. should probably just get out. I mean, if you, you know, you should probably just get out. You know, and aren't they closing these things up anyway in a year they're or two? Not necessarily. Oh, they're no. not. I heard a rumor. Somebody told me they were going to. I had begin heard. because of all the paging, all the fire paging services yeah. and stuff. They had closed quite a few of them back in the seventies, but I they, see. Oh, well, this know, one they, is uh, still this, viable. This yeah. is one of the ones with a better view and a better uh -huh. radio communications. So oh, I see. So you got radio up. Yeah, right. I see. I see. Yeah, they, so it's going to hang on. Well, they they got to do something about it. Well, like take down the tower. <laughs> right, it's, it's one of those things that... No, but I think from an environmental point, point of view, it's bet you you, you got to have the ranger tower. 
you know, because there's all these communities that need it. I know. So uh, in terms of a usefulness, it's more useful to have a ranger tower than, than a television station any day of the week. So maybe well, the way I looked at it, I thought it was, but it's, you know, if everything burned down around it, then they wouldn't have any reason to have a TV station. Yeah, inside. you're right. I don't know. It's a tough thing. I'm really sorry you're having headaches, and I, I, we'll 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 uh, we'll uh, bring it up with the right people. If I thought that the stomach aches and that that I've had since uh, New Year's had anything to do with that, I went to the doctor. I went to the hospital. And you got any stomach problems? Too? Oh, terrible, serious some stomach problem. But they thought maybe it was my gallbladder or not. The tests they've done, nothing shows up. So. So you've got, uh, you've got uh, uh, stomach problems. And that, you know, yeah. it, it just developed around Is that like aches and stuff or irritable stomach? Or really, it's, you know. Is it ache or is it other things? No, it's just a serious ache. It comes on and it, it'll make you throw up and it just... Have you, it, have you actually thrown up up uh, here from it? Not so much up here because I wasn't up here that much, but it, you know... You go home it, and you throw up. It hit. And oh, during the winter, I see. During the winter and there were times you couldn't get out of bed for two days. And, you know, just, Lay right there, and I said, I don't know whether that's a reaction from it or not, but it's. If I were you, I would get out of here. You know, you would think with the blood tests and the you tell, you had blood X-rays tests. and everything they did that they might have picked something up, but they, they didn't anything show up that you know not that they noticed. But see, so certain types of things are reversible. See, and if you can get out of it, and it, there, it's a reversible problem, and you and it'll it could you know because <coughs> you're still a young guy. And you shouldn't, uh, anyway, uh, it's, uh, maybe you should get out of here, you know, I don't know. Consider that, too. And really warn the people that they try to stick up here, you know, or else put shielding up. You might have the, yeah. if they're going to insist on doing maybe you should put like a totally shield and have some sort of periscope mm -hmm. or something to look around and just shield it with uh, uh, heavy gauge uh, iron or steel. That's a hard way to have I know, but I'm saying we're talking, you know, if they're going <coughs> to, I don't know, you know. True. Better that, or, or come in dressed like uh, the Tin Man or the Wiz 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 right. Wizard of Oz, you know, just like, like somebody from uh, uh -huh. Star Trek or something. <coughs> <laughs> well, no, I don't know. <laughs> All, right. All right. See you later. Very good. I yeah. never b been near deer, only in the zoo. I pet a deer, but yeah. I, in the woods. I mean, I've never been near a deer, woods. only when we're driving to um the country and a deer runs right across the road or in the um, I mean, fields. I mean, I pet it, but I was walking too fast. I was getting so nervous. I have to tell my mom. My mom's favorite pet is a deer. I have to tell her I went like this close to the deer. I mean, I mean, it's beautiful. I think what, why you? Walked so fast, scared it away. I don't maybe think that. I think it was maybe a deer that was brave. Cause when a deer is near you, he would run around, run away like crazy. Especially a wild one. Why do you yeah. think he was so tame? Well, maybe well, he. he maybe he was in a zoo and he ran away. But I doubt it. I think he seen lots of people and he been near people and he's used to people. Yeah. And so I, I think, think that. What people do you think? See, I think he would been, treat it nicely. Yeah, that he well, treat nice. I think place. maybe he would tell if someone was like in the shoot if them I, if they have because they really, usually have these. They have guns in their back and they usually walk. Like the that. Rangers probably and they, and they, feed them, and that's why they come. Got yes. a lot of time. They're my pets. They're my little friends. I why can't... didn't we pet it? Why couldn't we pet well, it? Well, probably you crowded them a little bit. Guess what? I went this close to it. Me really? too. 
if you probably, if you had sat down and had some crackers and things and put out there, they would come over and eat out of your hand. What was it? Have you ever pet the deer? Oh, yes. I had one here last year that would come right up and put his nose right in your back like that and follow you along trying to get food out of your pocket. Okay. And me, me and um, Toby and Katie went back there and went off the rocks and we were watching this stuff and we watched and we saw a little um, chickmunk. Chickmunk. And it stayed there and we looked at it and then it ran into the rocks. It was so cute. Yeah, it was. A, it, I probably lived in a hollow of a rock and was probably going to get some food. I mean, that deer, that, the chickmunk was like small, had a cute little tail. It was like brown on the front like that. I mean, it was just like the color of the deer. But that deer is so big. I mean, guts. Yeah, it was pretty big. And Hello, I'm Calvin Grimm. Uh, what you've seen here today is a beautiful example of a community that cares and works together and organizes things like Overlook Mountain Day. What we've gathered together to do is to celebrate the mountain, to express to the spirits that be, to ourselves, to the elected powers that be, that this mountain means a great deal to us, and it always has, and something's happened along the way. Either we weren't vocal enough year after year in reinforcing that importance, uh, somehow we were a bit naive that Overlook Mountain would be protected forever. Uh, we found out that it's not protected. No Lights Save Overlook Mountain, the organization, is working to, to acquire the remainder of Overlook Mountain, to uh, impart, uh, to make a part of our zoning ordinances, the kinds of things that treasure our mountains, and uh, raise the general consciousness of the community, those that don't already have it. We've seen some 300 people here today. They obviously feel for the mountain and the environment. Uh, it's interesting to note that the one particular subject that drew a lot of attention, uh, there are several others, uh, large housing developments being one, um, and the general scarring of the mountain, but one particular subject, that being the tower, WTZA's telecommunications tower, uh, their special use permit is up for renewal in December of this year. Uh, that tower was built before the site plan review occurred. It was built before they had a special use permit. Essentially, it was built illegally. Uh, this is before the courts right now. It's being appealed by TZA, as you can imagine it would be. But the special use permit is up for renewal in December. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether the planning board writes a new permit that allows TZA the violations which it now is operating under, or whether it revokes the special use permit. Uh, we, of course, would like to see the special use permit revoked. The uh, tower never should have been there. The appropriate environmental impact studies were not done. They, Judge Bradley has ruled that they should be. Uh, should all go back to the Ulster, the Ulster County Planning Board, and we're hoping that that's the course that occurs. All of these people here today, I think, feel similarly. Uh, so it's been wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. We had a spectacular time, and uh, this is nature at its best. It's a little cool and it's breezy, and the view from here is absolutely one of the most astounding views uh, the fire tower is a bit of a beautiful traditional way of people coming to admire the Catskill Mountains and the Hudson River Valley. And we want to thank Bart Friedman and his station for being with us here today and making this happen. Thank you very much.